Hi there! I'm Tris. Welcome to Comfy Cozy Crochet with Tris. I'm so glad to have you here. If you are new, um, welcome. So glad to have you. Please consider hitting that like button and the subscribe button down below. Get those notifications going so that you can join us every time. This is podcast number three. So um, we're just kind of getting started here. And I am so grateful to have everyone here who's returning. So thank you all for joining me here today. Um, and, and I just wanted to say hello to all the new subscribers and everybody who's already been here, because at a, as of filming this video, it looks like I'm at 101 subscribers, which that's crazy. We've only been doing this for two weeks. So um, again, as of filming this video. So I just wanted to say hi and welcome, welcome back. Today, we're just gonna do a regular podcast. So we're just talking about uh, works in progress and finished objects um, and a little bit of what I'm planning. So um, grab yourself a snack, maybe a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, and let's dig in. Um, this is gonna be a pretty short video today because I actually don't have all that much to share with you. One project in particular took up the vast majority of my time this week, and so I didn't have a whole lot of time to do little um, odds and ends, bits and bops, but there's a couple of things to show you, so let's get into it. Uh, the first thing that I made a little while back, which may have been shown on a previous podcast, I'm not sure, I think so, was this little teeny tiny baby hat that I made my 13 month old. Um, it's actually quite large on him. It can do the little spin around his head thing, <laughs> um, but he'll grow into it. If it's in him, okay, but it just wiggles on his head a little bit. This is a Bag O'Day pattern by Crystal. Um, it's the super textured beanie hat. And I will go ahead and leave that pattern down below. I know she numbers all of her patterns and this is number 500 and something that I don't know off the top of my head. So I really apologize for that. I will go ahead and link it down below though for you guys so you'll be able to find it really easily. Um, I made this with Vanna's Choice Mill Ends that I got forever and a day ago. Um, and it's kind of a charcoal color. It's really interesting color as I was working with it, I think it gives off a little bit of a green cast. Um, and then when I brought my grand or my grandson, when I brought my son over to my grandparents' house um, wearing this hat, she goes, what are you doing wearing, dressing him in all those, you know, purple things? He's wearing all gray, Graham. <laughs> so anyway, she goes, oh, well, it gives kind of a purple cast to me. But anyway, it's charcoal. This is what it looks like. It's got some really nice, um, there you go. We've got some um, front post, back post, double crochets, and some shell rows as well. And so it gives this, this awesome texture. Um, and I just really enjoy making this. I made one before, which um, was out of the Hobby Lobby Chloe yarn in the color Carnation. You would have seen that in a past podcast. Turned out so different than this, just based on what yarn you use. So it's really interesting how, how different patterns can be when using different colors of yarn, different color combinations, stripes, what have you, color work, and also textures of yarn. Um, you know, this is a very masculine hat in my opinion, and mine was so feminine and lacy in the other yarn. Just by switching yarn, that's it. Um, it's one of the things I love so much about crochet is how different things can really look based on what you're doing, um, what you're using, what hook size. Um, and there's just the, the combinations are endless, and that's really interesting to me. So anyway, tangent. Um, so here's the baby hat that I made. So we walk, usually as a family, sometimes I go by myself, but usually as a family, I walk about five and a half miles a day, um, at least five days a week, if not more. Um, just kind of around our, our neighborhood and the two adjacent neighborhoods um, to us. And we just, we have awesome neighbors. We love to, to say hi to everyone and chat with them. And we, we go for this long walk and it's getting a little bit chilly. It's October here. No, oh my gosh, it's October. I don't know where that came from. It is December 7th, Pearl Harbor Day. Um, and so um, it, it's getting a little bit chilly here, but we're actually having very balmy weather for the Pacific Northwest. I'm in Washington state. If anybody has not seen previous videos, I'm in Washington state. And so we're usually experiencing quite chilly weather. Um, in the past week, week and a half, we've been in the mid fifties um, all week. Um, we are having lows in the low 
30s um, but only one day last week I believe was actually hit the freezing point so it's really interesting but it's kind of windy and so our ears are getting cold because we're going in the afternoon slash evening so by the end of our walk the sun has set the winds going a little bit it's a little bit windy hence the hat I made for my son but my husband Sean was like um maybe you could make me one, which was actually kind of exciting for me. I just have to share with you guys because he's never asked for a crochet item before. I thought that was awesome. <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna get you coming around yet. No, he, he fully supports me. He really um, loves what I do. He's interested in it. And he actually is very mathematically minded. So he's like, let's think this out. Maybe I can help you with your patterns. Maybe we could design something, right? You do the crochet work, I'll do the, the stitch counts and things like that. We'll work it out together. It's actually really sweet and fun, but we have that relationship where we're best friends and we definitely rib each other constantly. So hopefully he doesn't come off like mean in these videos because he's totally not. <laughs> but we have a really good time playing with each other. So here is his. It's exactly the same hat in exactly the same yarn, that same, I think it's called Charcoal and Vanna's Choice Mill End that I got once upon a time at Joann's. Same exact hat pattern by Crystal at Bag O'Day, just in a full size hat. So there's that. Hopefully you're seeing Hopefully that was picking up all of that texture. Again, not that exciting to look at because I just showed you the other one, but aren't they cute side by side? I think they're adorable. <laughs> so here are these, one's a baby one, one's a big old noggin. So we've got those. And then I had just a little bit um, of, of yarn left. And so I decided that I wanted to make an ear warmer for myself. And I decided to make one by I believe it's Claudette or Claudetta Crochet. I will link it down below once again. And this was the, the X Fold ear warmer or something of that nature. Again, I'll, I'll link it down below so you should have no problem finding it. But this is the one I made for myself. And she talked about that instead of it having just the normal twist um, closure, that it has this kind of X. So hopefully you guys can see this um, this closure here because it was um, quite different actually than the other ones that I had seen. And she advertised it as quite different as well. I mean, it's not crazy different, but it's got this, like I said, this X closure rather than just the regular kind of swoopy thing. Um, so I went ahead and made one of these and it's actually kind of hilarious because I was terrified the only other one of these I've ever tried to make ended up way too large for my grandmother. Um, so I was terrified that it was gonna end up stretching as crochet often does, especially in acrylic yarns. I was afraid that it was gonna end up stretching and it wasn't gonna fit, so I made it quite tight. And I didn't think that was gonna be a problem so long as it fit on my head, right? But I didn't anticipate that this is kind of bumpy and ridged on the inside because of um, that closure where you sew it up. And so I actually, here, I'll try it out for you. I'll look all goofy. Never 100% certain about how you're supposed to be wearing these, but I just wanted it to cover my, you see? Cover my ears. And normally I have my hair in a ponytail. I'm out walking or whatever. Um, but anyway, I did not anticipate, excuse the crazy hair now, um, that that was going to in, make indents on my forehead. I was like, oh, I, it feels kind of scratchy to me. It's acrylic, it shouldn't feel scratchy. And when I took it off, there were bumps. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it indented my head a little bit. Get out of town, I could not believe it. <laughs> Leave it to me to injure myself with an ear warmer of all things. Um, but it that was the first day I wore it. I have worn it about three times now and it does seem like it's stretching a little bit and I'm able to wear it without pain and injury. So <laughs> what are the odds? But this is just a little, um, you work in the back loop so you end up with this kind of ribbed texture um, there. And again, it's so funny, I'm wearing an olive, um, an olive sweater 
you can see and here's the charcoal and I just I'm sitting here looking at it I think it gives off a very green cast certainly not purple but it's hilarious so this is one of those magic colors what does it look like to you let me know <laughs> but anyway so here's my ear warmer so that is the third and final fin finished object now Petra from Petra's happy place um, I was watching one of her lives hi Petra if you're watching um, and participating in one of her lives last week and I was just cracking up because she was talking about AFOs, almost finished objects. <laughs> Mostly finished, but there's just one or two little things you have to do. You have to weave in ends or, um, you know, you know, have two rows left or there's pockets that need to be sewn on or something like that. I loved that term because I feel like I'm the queen of AFOs or almost finished objects. So, so my last um, finished object or almost finished object is a completely finished C to C throw and it is of sunflowers. However, there's a million ends to weave in. So that's the A part of the FO. <laughs> um, but I will show it to you. This took up all of my time the last couple of weeks pretty much. The fact that I got one hat and one ear warmer done this week because um, like I said the other one the baby one was done a few weeks ago was crazy to me now if weaving in ends and looking at ends causes you anxiety please look away now have you looked away okay because <laughs> this is a monster you guys but this is by uh, Nanny Nana's crafty home Nana's Crafty Home, Nana's Crafty something. I will again link it down below. It's her Sunflower C to C uh, Grafgan throw. And it's so much fun. Ooh, let's see. Let me see what I can do here. But the ends are massive, you guys. Can you see this? So it's got the green for the oops, green for the little um, leaves, and you've got the taupe in there for the sunflower center. But so many ends to weave in. It's got this lovely royal blue background. Um, and when this is completely finished and I can officially, all these ends, I, I have started weaving in the ends, uh, we're to like here. <laughs> um, I finished it today, so I have not had time to work on these monster ends. I mean, they're just everywhere, you guys. So anyway, I will be spending the remainder of tonight and probably most of tomorrow when my little one is having his nap, I will be weaving in ends. Um, this is for my auntie for her birthday, which is in February. I thought this was actually going to take much, much longer than it did. So I got a huge jump on it, um, thinking that it was going to be a monster and the rest of the Christmas presents I have to make are just washcloths, dishcloths and the like. Um, so I went ahead and got a jump on this thinking it was going to take forever and it actually really didn't. Um, it was fairly easy to follow. It was my first graph gown of any type, um, which was a big goal for me. And I was thoroughly intimidated had I not seen this particular pattern for sunflowers. There's no way I would have tried a, a graph gown this early on in my crochet adventure. Because um, I've only been crocheting about four years now, three and a half, four years, somewhere around there. Um, and so I, I was thinking, this is awfully advanced. <laughs> not that I think I'm advanced, I'm, I'm saying the opposite. Like, I, I feel like this is too much for me, but I actually had a really good time. So those are my finished objects and my almost finished object or AFO. Thanks, Petra, for the little, little tip and label there. Um, and the next thing on my plate after I finish weaving in these ends, which these ends, very well may end up being its own project in and of itself. That might take a few days in and of itself. But after that, I want to tackle another undertaking, which is another a 3D object. This sounds silly, you guys, but I have a really hard time with anything 3D. Um, so I've never attempted a cocoon or an afghan or a sweater or socks or um, anything of that nature. Um, 
I feel like 2D flat objects are, are more my game <laughs> and I need to branch out. So I saw a couple of really fun patterns for Christmas stockings and I know I'm late to the game. It is December 7th and I'm gonna try to crochet my son his own Christmas stocking. I'm terrified that I'm not gonna get this done in time for him, but he's also three to 13 months old. So if he doesn't know he doesn't have a stocking, he's not really gonna know but I'm gonna feel it. So I picked up a few different yarns. I got this big twist value in deep red is the color. And if anybody wants to know, it says, again, this is a running joke with any big twist yarns. It says machine washable, low iron, do not bleach, do not tumble dry, dry clean and dry flat. So again, you can machine wash it, but go ahead and dry clean it. Um, it is 380 yards, 347 meters, six ounces, 170 grams. The color is deep red and I believe, yep, made in Turkey. It is a 100% acrylic and that's actually showing up brighter than it is in person. Uh, in person, there's another color that's called Varsity Red and it's a very bright, vibrant red. That's what this is looking like on camera but this is much deeper. There you go, that's what it looks like. Much deeper in person. Um, so I got that one, and this is the same yarn, Big Twist Value, and this one is in emerald, in emerald green, yep. Yeah. So I thought those looked nice together. And again, that red is a little bit deeper, so this is a quite a deep green, but not actually as deep as it's coming off on camera. And then the red is a deeper red that's coming off in camera. So those are gonna be my Christmas colors there. And then I might, if I have time, I might go ahead and make something for myself in this beautiful big twist twinkle in the color green. Um, and this is 380 yards, 347 meters, six ounces, 170 grams. Same care instructions, both are number fours. Um, calls for an H hook. So no. these other two also called for an H hook and it is 97% acrylic and 3% polyester. And this is Joanne's house brand. So I've got these three Christmas colors here and I went ahead and bought this Go For Faux Thick and Quick by Lion brand. This is in the color Chinchilla. So it's mostly white, but there's a really soft gray, um, I don't know, undertone, if you will, to this color. Quickly, I'll give you the stats. 4.2 ounces, 120 grams, 24 yards, 22 meters. It says it's a size seven jumbo, calls for an, for an S hook. Guys, that's the first time I've ever heard of that. I don't even know what to do with that. Um, 19 millimeter hook it says 100% polyester machine wash gentle lay flat to dry and made in China this is so soft and lovely this is what the label looks like if anybody is interested um, and I'm really excited so I think I'm going to just line the very top of that um, those stockings in this I got a few of them hopefully it'll be enough and it won't be too girly. So if you guys have any really awesome stocking patterns, please leave them down below for me. I would love to know. What's your favorite Christmas make? Um, ornaments, throws, stockings, socks, whatever. I'm super excited to know what you guys are making this holiday season. How are you? What's been going on? Let's talk in the comments below. That's always my favorite part of these videos actually. It's just getting to know you all. That's my whole goal with this channel and I can't wait to talk to you guys more. That's all I have for you today. So I hope you guys are having a great week, a great weekend whenever you're watching this and I will talk to you real soon. Bye guys.